Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 12 for May the 17th, 2020. We begin a new unit today, uh, Unit 3. It is entitled, Call to God's Work of Justice. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled, Just Rewards. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm 86, uh, verses 1 through 13. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 21. And we'll be studying today from uh, Jeremiah, chapter 21, verses 8 through 14. Our key verse reads, This is what the Lord says to you, House of David. Administer justice every morning. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Or my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. And that's taken from Jeremiah chapter 21 verse 12. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand divine justice described by Jeremiah. Secondly, to appreciate that God is a God of justice. And then thirdly, uh, to make a personal commitment to justice and advocacy for justice. We have two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, A Final Chance. And then the second outline is entitled, A Final Appeal and a final verdict. And so we certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity to share uh, God's word with you. We thank and praise God that we have some time uh, to share. We have some time to study. We have some time to examine the things that God have called uh, for his people to engage. We certainly are praying for all of the families uh, that have been affected uh, by this pandemic. We certainly are praying that God will continue to enlighten us and to keep us. And I just want you to know that God is faithful. Uh, he has been faithful. He will continue to keep us. He will continue to watch over us and he will continue to comfort us. And so we hope, uh, trust and pray that you will uh, follow us today in our Sunday School lesson. We have a lot to uh, unpack for you today. Um, we certainly have been examining uh, words through various prophets over many weeks through uh, God's Word and through our Sunday School lessons uh, directed at the southern uh, kingdom of Judah. And so today is no exception. We're looking through the lens of the prophet Isaiah I'm sorry, through the prophet Jeremiah uh, concerning uh, the words that God had given him. And so we want to uh, just touch on um, this unit, uh, unit three, called to God's work of justice. And I want to just unpack that for us uh, as justice is you know, defined by God. Uh, but essentially God, uh, he seeks to reestablish uh, in his creation where all people receive the benefits of life with him. Uh, so when you hear that word justice come up in our lesson, uh, there is a nature uh, of justice, uh, really two aspects of, of justice. The first uh, is a standard uh, by which uh, penalties are assigned for breaking obligations uh, in a particular society. Uh, the second aspect of justice is the standard by which the advantages of, of social life are handed out, including material goods and uh, rights of participation, uh, opportunities, and also of liberties. Um, but it is a standard for both punishment and benefits. And so uh, we can speak of it as a plumb line. Um, uh, this is a quote from Isaiah chapter 28 verse 17. Uh, I shall use justice as a plumb line and righteousness as a plummet. Uh, and so uh, justice uh, 
presupposes uh, God's intention for people to be in community. And so uh, when people had become poor and weak with respect to the rest of the community, uh, they, uh, God prescribed that they were to be strengthened so that they continue, they could continue to be effective uh, uh, members of, of the community, uh, uh, living with them and, and, and beside them. And so uh, biblical justice restores people to community. Uh, if you have opportunity, I want you to look at Leviticus chapter 25 verses 35 and 36 so as we talk about justice in this context and as we read in the key verse what God is looking for uh, God is looking for his people or those who are stronger if you will to administer uh, a sense of fair play uh, equity if you will amongst those who had uh, uh, had been displaced by uh, sometime no fault of their own but God wanted them to be a part of the community at large and so a failure to do that uh, brought about uh, injustice uh, in the community and it also brought about God's wrath upon uh, uh, the Davidic dynasty we're going to look at that today and so uh, again, we hope that you will uh, follow us. We hope that you will prepare to take notes and we hope that you will engage in this lesson and, and just see what this historical account lends for us today um, from the 21st chapter of the book of Jeremiah. And before we get to these outlines, uh, the two that we have today, I want to just talk about this context because it's important to uh, frame this uh, uh, as a foundation that we will be able to understand uh, as God starts to speak out uh, through the prophet Jeremiah. So this uh, Jeremiah chapter 21 is a coherent unit. Uh, the opening verses set the scene. Um, Pashur and Zephaniah were sent uh, by Judah's uh, final king Zedekiah to Jeremiah. Uh, this Pashur is not the same Pashur as in Jeremiah chapter 20. Uh, was a dogged appoint opponent of Jeremiah even trying to have him executed. I want you to look at Jeremiah chapter 38 verses 1 through 4. And then Zephaniah a priest uh, not to be confused with the prophet of the same name was uh, not actively hostile to Jeremiah. You can look at uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 21 verse 1 and also Jeremiah chapter 29 uh, verses 25 through 29. So these two emissaries uh, intended to enlist Jeremiah's help in order to ensure God's aid against King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. That's in Jeremiah chapter 21 verse 1 and 2. So King Zedekiah apparently thought that he would be aided by the Egyptians if he rebelled against the Chaldeans. Uh, we can also look at Second um, uh, Kings uh, chapter 18 verse 21. So the situation became uh, desperate when Jerusalem was besieged. That's in Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 1 and 2. So Zedekiah and his messengers uh, had some confidence in God's willingness to help them based on his past work. So since uh, he had protected Jerusalem, he being God, uh, he had protected Jerusalem before uh, you can look at 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 35 and 36. Uh, couldn't he be counted on to do so again? So as Jeremiah's response shows, the request demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of Judah's standing with God. Uh, Jeremiah's response came in three parts. First uh, came uh, words to King Zedekiah himself. This is in Jeremiah chapter 21. Verses 1 through 3, uh, the prophet was blunt. Uh, Jerusalem's weapon, uh, their weapons would become 
a liability as the Lord himself fights against the city. And so today's uh, text uh, taken from Jeremiah chapter 21 verses 8 through 14 um, opens with the second section uh, of uh, Jeremiah's response and this one particularly uh, is directed at the people and I you know as I was reading this uh, I just want to share with us today that every tub has to set on its own bottom uh, I know you are familiar with that with that phrase and so uh, as we look at this lesson today I don't want us to uh, miss the fact that God has been for the past weeks even through our lessons and even through various prophets God has been talking to people who are in a relationship with him who are in a covenant with him and uh, so Judah had the law the Mosaic law Judah had been taught the law uh, Judah understood the requirements uh, they should have understood the requirements of that covenant so we're not talking about people who are outside of fellowship with God. We're talking about people who are in a relationship or in fellowship with God through the Mosaic Covenant. But these individuals do not want to conform to the terms in that covenant. They do not want to abide by the conditions that God laid out for them that would uh, govern their fellowship, if you will. And so I want us to make sure that we understand that just because we are in a relationship with God or we have fellowship with him or that we say we are in a relationship with him does not give us license to, to disobey him. It does not give us a pass, if you will, on walking up righteously before God. Uh, and, I, and I hope that we will hear that today because the same God that uh, uh, is talking through Jeremiah uh, uh, to his people is the same God that, that is dealing with us, who is talking to the church, who is talking to the people who have uh, uh, confessed Christ as Lord and Savior. So, uh, uh, and it should be understood that uh, I have witnessed this as a preacher, as a man of God, that sometimes, and this lesson will uh, set the table for us, as I read in the context, that uh, Zedekiah sent two emissaries, two envoys, if you will, uh, to Jeremiah to see if Jeremiah could get God to help them in this campaign against Babylon. Uh, so they would win or they would overcome but God was sending the Babylonians against uh, his people Judah because of their disobedience so let me say this just because I am a preacher or a man of God does not mean that I have some sort of magical powers uh, that I can intervene when God has said to obey him that I can pray for you or I can extend a word to you that would uh, uh, subvert the obedience or the laws of God we don't have or possess that kind of authority if God has required and we're going to look at this in the New Testament uh, if God has commanded and required for us to walk up right before him and to obey him we don't have the authority to overturn that command. As a preacher, as a minister, as a pastor, we do not have uh, that kind of uh, uh, liberty where we can tell God and order God what to do against what he has already said. And so this is the framework of these two emissaries. Uh, 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 the king, if you will, the king has authority. But the king recognizes that the prophet has a measure of influence, if you will, uh, with God. And so I want you to understand that Jeremiah's ministry back over in the 20th chapter, the book of Jeremiah, uh, uh, lays out for us that this man was unpopular. Uh, he did not have good things to say. Uh, 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 he rendered judgment. He rendered uh, things that the people did not want to hear. And so <clears throat> God had been warning Judah 
to get themselves together, to stop disobeying him. And so what they thought, even through this succession of kings, Zedekiah being the last in Judah, uh, was to send these two emissaries, Pashur and uh, Zephaniah, uh, go and see through the prophet if uh, 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 God will uh, uh, do something about this situation and help us out. But Zedekiah failed to understand that his remedy was in the law that God gave them, in the Mosaic law, which was to obey him. That was the prescription. So we, we, we like to go, and if there's absolutely nothing wrong with us praying for people or intervening or uh, uh, going to bat for people who are going through. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we have to live a life that is pleasing to God. I hope that this is making sense to you today because this type of tactic uh, that these uh, individuals on the behalf of Zedekiah still exist today. We're still trying to get people to mediate uh, for us, uh, though we won't stop sinning, uh, we want to use these individual uh, prophets, if you will, to speak some good things to us so we might be able to escape what God has prescribed in his word. And that just does not happen. That is not going to work. And so what Zedekiah learned uh, 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 through this uh, tactic that Jeremiah uh, 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 rendered a, uh, an indictment to him. If you read the uh, 21st chapter of the book of Jeremiah, it starts out with an indictment uh, uh, against the king. Uh, then it flows into the people and then it goes to the house of David itself. So where we pick up our first outline is in this uh, a second response that God renders to his people. And so I, I know that was a little lengthy, but we need to be clear today that human nature has not changed. And so uh, uh, we think that as people of God that we have some sort of license to escape the commands of God, and we just don't have that. And so uh, our first outline is entitled, a final chance. This is taken from Jeremiah chapter 21 uh, verses 8 through 10. And I want to read this from uh, the King James Version. The Bible says, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus says the Lord, uh, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence but he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you he shall live and his life shall be unto him for a prey verse 10 for I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good saith the Lord and it shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon and he shall burn it with fire so if the Lord has had enough basically of Judah God has had enough and when I was studying this I, I the Spirit of the Lord just reminded me and I want to ask you this question how long is God required to tell us the same thing before he acts how long how long does God have to keep repeating himself before he does something about our behavior or our conduct uh, uh, or uh, how we choose to handle his commands? How many times does the Lord have to warn us? And so if you think about Judah uh, uh, and how many times the Lord, even in our Sunday school lesson, we have look through the lens of multiple prophets uh, who have been sent by God to uh, the nation of Judah to get themselves together. Uh, and so what the Lord is saying here uh, in this uh, 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 first outline here to Judah, I set before you the way of, of life and death. 
That's back over in Deuteronomy chapter 30, I believe. And so what God is going back to is nothing new to them or should not have been new to them. It was what he had already told them. And so uh, 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 God was requiring uh, that they obey him. Those were the terms of the covenant. Those are the terms of, of, of the fellowship, if you will, that you abide by the terms. God has every right to extend those commands to any people uh, 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 that he has redeemed or saved, uh, purchased, if you will. And so God is saying here, uh, if you stay in this city, if you stay in this city, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. If you don't go into this captivity, you're going to die by the sword. You're going to die by famine. You're, you're going to die uh, uh, by the pestilence. In other words, you're not going to escape. And so uh, uh, many times when, and this came up in the study of, of, of our lesson context uh, as we uh, uh, was able to dig a little bit deeper. Sometimes we think that our comfort zones, uh, even as people of God, uh, if the Lord blesses you with the biggest house and sets it up on the highest hill uh, so no one else can get to you, that doesn't mean you can get away with what God has prescribed in his word. If God allowed you to have a house on a hill, on the highest hill, don't you think he can get to you? Don't you think he can uh, 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 cause you uh, uh, to be overtaken? And so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, some of these individuals, uh, even in Judah's case, they were not, they had decided that they were not going to go into captivity under the Babylonian rule and reign. But God says, if that doesn't get you, then the famine is going to get you. Uh, the sword is going to get you the pestilence. So in other words, you're not going to escape. And I like this in the NIV translation uh, uh, in verse 8. The Bible says, furthermore, tell the people, tell everyone, this is what the Lord says. I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. And as the people of God... Uh, one of the things that we have to understand as children of God, the people of God, is that our sin, uh, uh, it breaks the fellowship with God. That's what happened in this case. And so when we break the fellowship, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if I am a preacher. It doesn't matter if I am a king. If I am associated with God and I break the fellowship uh, uh, with God through my own sinfulness then we only have one remedy for that and that is to repent uh, we don't have an exclusive uh, 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 excuse with God the remedy that God set forth uh, and what he is requiring uh, of Judah is to stop is to turn from their wicked way is to cease uh, from sinning obey the law so I'm setting before you the terms either you're going to live uh, 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 by the terms of the covenant or you're going to die you're going to be separated from the fellowship that I initially brought to you so the way that you get that back or to restore that is to stop sinning is to repent of those things and so it, it is important to understand that God is against it. It's not going to work. It doesn't matter how you dress it up. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter what you think. If God is telling you to obey him uh, uh, or telling us to obey him, that's what he is expecting. But I want to give you Acts chapter 17 uh, we won't have time to get over there today. Uh, but I want you to look at Acts chapter 17, uh, verses 29 through 32. And I also want you to look at Acts chapter 3, uh, verses 17 through 21. 
And so it's important to understand that the enemy, the full weight of the Babylonian army, is literally at the front door of Judah. So uh, uh, a temporary lifting of the siege of Jerusalem had occurred earlier and provided misguided hope for those who refused to believe and accept the conditions of Jeremiah's prophets, prophecy. Remember I said to you earlier that uh, uh, this man is unpopular. Uh, he's experienced all sorts of difficulty as a preacher, as a man of God, telling people things that they don't want to hear. And sometimes when we tell people things that they don't want to hear, they cast it off as though it's not going to take place. But, but, but the, the indictment here, uh, as we are sharing with you today, they refuse to believe and accept the conditions. So now faced with the most powerful and ruthless uh, military machine in the Middle East, Zedekiah and his officials want Jeremiah to intercede to God on their behalf. So their hope is that God will relent and cause the Babylonians to withdraw again, only to, so they could continue to keep disobeying God. Isn't that amazing? How we 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 want God to uh, uh, to stop His uh, actions against us, but we won't stop sinning. We want God to. Uh, don't, look God don't do us any harm but we're not going to obey you uh, 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 I would also remind you to read Romans chapter 6 and I, 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 I use that passage a lot because the Apostle Paul was illustrating very uh, uh, succinctly over there that uh, grace is not given to us to exploit God is not waking us up every morning for us to be better sinners uh, uh, God is not going to continue to strive with that mindset that I'm going to live on my terms and I'm going to just go to church and I'm going to look like the Christian that I am and I'm not going to abide by. I mean, how long do you think God is going to continue to uh, 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 allow that to go on when he is requiring and he's commanding his people to live a according to the term so they thought they thought that God would help them in this endeavor and so only two options were open to the inhabitants of Jerusalem the way of life and the way of death it's 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 not it's not hard but you do have to make a decision uh, there was no other way for Judah but to accept this final chance to live because God had turned his face or removed his favor from Jerusalem and the inhabitants. Let me say something to you, and I, and I want to give you some scripture to frame what I'm about to share with you, but it, it comes from the first epistle of John, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 and 2, and also... Uh, um, the first epistle of John chapter 1 uh, verses 5 through 10 I hope that you will read those but I just want to share with us today to make sure that we understand that God is serious about his relationship with you and with me uh, keep in mind Jesus died for that fellowship Jesus shed his precious blood that you could I that you and I could enjoy this right but if we are going to disobey God if we are not going to live accordingly to the commands and so this excuse that it's nothing wrong with a little bit well where is that in scripture uh, uh, it's nothing wrong with me doing this and doing that well is that biblically uh, uh, found uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, do this but God is uh, uh, is not going to say anything about it uh, I hope that you are supported by scripture in your thought process. Uh, I hope that you are guided by the word of God in a way that you understand that that blatant type of attitude or unbelief or sin is going to disrupt your fellowship with God. 
I should also tell you that it's going to frustrate your prayer life. Uh, I should tell you it's going to uh, uh, suppress uh, what you expect God to do in your life. And so if you expect God to hear you, you should understand that he wants us to hear him. Uh, and so if we are not going to change, uh, and this is the mindset that Judah had, uh, think about Zedekiah for a minute, crafting this in his mind that I'm going to decide here that I'm going to get two guys for me to, and I'm going to send these guys to this prophet Jeremiah because he has leverage with God, that he has some kind of inroad with God, and I'm going to see if he can work this thing out uh, for us that we don't. Uh, be overtaken by the Babylonians. Think about the conspiracy of this thing, that he would craft this in his mind, a king, and that he would set the table. And, 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 but there's nothing in there that there was a commitment. Now, we did have some reforms under King Josiah who brought in some reforms and tried to get the people back to obeying God. He was a very good king, uh, but he died. Uh, and so after which uh, uh, the people went backward because of the leadership and not forward. Uh, and so they are bringing judgment on themselves. And so now uh, Zedekiah is looking for a way out of this thing. Uh, but what we are reading in, in this first outline is this is the final chance. Uh, this is the last chance that we have uh, uh, to get ourselves together. And so what God is offering to Judah is a way out. Uh, but if you're not going to accept, even through captivity, uh, God is saying you'll survive in this captivity, but you won't survive outside of this captivity. Sometimes the Lord allows the enemy to buffet us uh, because we fail to obey God and we are praying for God to lift this condition, but the condition might be lifted if we obey the Lord. Uh, perhaps God will stay his hand uh, 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 if you, we would walk upright uh, before the Lord. So the in the spiritual realm, these same options are set before humankind. Uh, the way of life and the way of death. The way of life is choosing to repent, accepting the gift of salvation uh, by faith in Jesus Christ uh, and submitting to the will of God. Those who elect the way of death refuse this offer and choose eternal separation from God. Is that what you want? Is that what you're after? Uh, that uh, passage that I gave you in 1st John chapter 2 uh, verse uh, 1 and 2 will help us to understand that we only have one mediator and what Zedekiah was trying to do was use Jeremiah as a mediator uh, between the nation uh, uh, of, of Judah and God and so that passage will help you understand, help us understand that we only have one mediator between God and man today, and that is Jesus Christ. And without him mediating for you or for us, then there is no one else uh, uh, that can come. Uh, and so you might get anyone else, you might get other people to pray and other things but we have to come to terms with the fact that God sent his only begotten son into this world to take on the sinfulness of human nature and to die a just penalty for that that you and I could have the right to the tree of life but apart from that mediator there is no fellowship with God I hope that we understand that today. So in view of the two choices open to humankind, how active and focused is the ministry of evangelism of our local congregations. And so we have to be vigilant about uh, making sure that we alert men to the facts that they must be saved. This is not guesswork. Uh, and I know that uh, 
Uh, but we have to demonstrate through scripture that man desperately needs to be saved. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what they think. It, what, it matters what God has done. Before we came into this world, Jesus had already died uh, and shed his blood for our sins. Why would God do that and send his son to die such a death and, and, and blood be shed if men didn't need, need to be saved? It doesn't make sense. And so here our final uh, outline is entitled A Final Appeal and A Final Verdict. This is taken from Jeremiah chapter 21 verses 11 through 14. I think I want to read this from the uh, NIV translation because now we're moving uh, down in this uh, response that God uh, has given. This is now directed at the house of David. This uh, verse is 11 uh, through 14. So the Bible says, Moreover, say to the royal house of Judah, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says to you, house of David. Administer justice every morning. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Or my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. Verse 13. I am against you, Jerusalem. You who live above this valley on the rocky plateau declares the Lord. You who say, who can come up against us? Who can enter our refuge? Verse 14, I will punish you as your deeds deserve, declares the Lord. It will kindle a fire in your forest that will consume everything around you. Remember I said to you earlier about that house up on that, that hill. Um, things in this life that we, um, that we are desperately seeking to have. Um, that we want. And what these material things do for us. They give us a sense of security. As though we are safe from the things that go on around us. But because of who we are, we'll bring God right to our doorstep. You have no security system when you set your alarm that God doesn't know the code. Uh, there is no place for you and I to go that a word can't enter. Uh, and so we have to recognize that what we are trying today was tried in this text. And what God is speaking to, he is speaking to the attitudes and the, the forethoughts, if you will, that we have about how secure we may be. So God is saying to them, those who live above the valley on the rocky plateau, uh, you who say, who can come against us? They thought the Babylonians couldn't get to them. They thought they were so safe in not just what they had and where they were, but who they were. They thought that they were exempt. This should be a lesson to us today that you are not exempt from obeying the law. It doesn't matter what your title is. This King Zedekiah, he had rank, he had authority, he had power, but God's against him. God's against uh, his, ma his, his manner of thinking. God is against that mindset. And so uh, the question uh, is asked two of them in this 13th verse. Who can come against us? Who can enter our refuge? And let me answer that. God can. God can enter. God can uh, come against us. God can come and enter where you think you are safe. So God is saying, I will punish you as your deeds deserve, declares the Lord. I will kindle a fire in your forest that will consume everything around you. 
God's word has the capacity to touch everything that we touch. And so we have to understand here that uh, Zedekiah, the ruling king, was offered a way to mitigate God's wrath against Judah in Jerusalem. He could have given an order as king, perhaps as his predecessor Josiah had done, to reform. He could have enacted that. He could have initiated that. Uh, he could have uh, required it. He could have led the people uh, uh, in a way that would save the city. But he didn't make that decision. So first justice and righteousness had to be executed as prescribed in God's law. When we get in leadership we get in places of authority. We have a responsibility to obey the law. It doesn't matter. If God has given you a company, God has given you a business, God has given you the capacity to lead others, uh, we have a responsibility uh, uh, to God. So, if the king obeyed, God would keep his covenant with David and maintain his dynasty or royal house disobedience uh, meant disinheritance and certain destruction for Judah and Jerusalem. Second, the people of Jerusalem had abandoned the notion that their city was impregnable and the belief that they had no reason to fear. So they just thought. So there, there's no way around this thing. But those in positions of leadership knowing the surety of, of coming judgment uh, on all humankind, we must witness to the laws and point them to Christ for salvation. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. I want you to look at Psalm uh, 103, verse 9 and verse 10. And so uh, we've had enough today uh, to encourage us today to see the historical account that if it didn't work for Judah, how do we expect those things to work for us today? So the question, how should the reality of the coming of a coming judgment affect our daily lives? And I, I, I want you to look at the first epistle of John chapter three, uh, verses one through three. This is a very direct uh, lesson uh, aimed at uh, the nation of Judah but I hope that with the passages that I have shared with you today even in the, to the New Testament we will see that the same God presides over our fellowship and our relationship we have an obligation as the people of God to obey God uh, that goes for me and that goes for you and so when we break that fellowship through our disobedience and subsequent sin uh, then we have an obligation to fall to our knees and ask God to forgive us in the name of Jesus that that blood that Jesus shed at Calvary would cleanse us from our unrighteousness, all of it. Uh, and so as we recognize that we have erred, and, and, and this is something that we don't need to be uh, so alarmed about, you're going to slip and you're going to fall. And so uh, uh, I would just suggest to you to get up, uh, not wallow. I would suggest to you to recognize through the mirror of the word of God that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I would hope and suggest to you that you and I would, would say to God in a serious manner, God forgive me of my sins in the name of Jesus and be done with that and move on. Uh, move on from that experience, move on from uh, that disobedience, move on to obeying God in a, in a practical way. And so we have to, uh, God expected them to know the law. He didn't give them that exhaustive system of laws and commandments and statutes and ordinances for them to blatantly disobey him. He gave them that, uh, Israel, that Judah, that so they would have a framework 
of, of, of how to walk up righteously before him. And so now we have laws, we have the commandments, we have the word of God in essence that we are guided by to help us understand. So what God is saying to us now through the word of God that we have no excuse. And so I hope, trust, and pray that we have encouraged you today. And sometimes the word of God is not popular. Uh, it's not a blessing uh, of, of a material thing wrapped in it. But it can be a blessing of life itself. Uh, if we would embrace the salvation and the word of God that he has sent to us, then it has lasting implications. It has eternal implications uh, to save us. Uh, uh, from our sins, from ourselves, from the self-destructive nature that we have apart from God. And so this is the, uh, 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 the, the, the encouragement today that we want to take away from this lesson today. God was giving people, his people, what they deserved. He punished them according to their deeds, the things that he uh, knows that they did. He's not asking. Uh, God keeps very good records, and very good account of who we are. He knows the meditations of our heart. So I want to close with this prayer for us today. Uh, but I, I think it's necessary in, in light of where we are today uh, and what's going on in our world today. It should cause us to reflect today. Uh, uh, individually and corporately where are we with God and I know that many people are praying today uh, but the question is will God hear our prayers how can we be heard what is God requiring of us today individually and corporately and can we do better at the things that God has called us to do uh, so our prayers can be effective and our relationships can be effective uh, uh, that we can incorporate people into community who have been uh, 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 left out, if you will, uh, disconnected from uh, the goods and the services that God have uh, required that they should have. And through uh, injustices in the world, the people have not received those things. And so uh, God is calling on us in all of our capacity. So let me pray for us today as we seek to close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to share this lesson today. Father, we thank you for just forgiving us today. And, and Father, if we have committed any sins, please forgive us of our sins. In the name of Jesus. Father, if we have thought wrong, if we have said wrong, if we've done wrong, uh, and that if it has displeased you in any shape, of form we ask you to forgive us in the name of Jesus uh, blot out our iniquities O oh God and cleanse us from our unrighteousness and we shall be clean we thank you for uh, contending with us we thank you for giving us an opportunity to get ourselves uh, together with thee father we pray for this nation today in the name of Jesus we pray for the nations around us we pray for the leadership around us today that you would give them a mind to seek you out you have all of the answers to what ails us today father we are praying for families today who have been affected by this virus we pray for those who are on the front lines we pray for those who are uh, embracing death to save life father we just thank you today for all that you have provided and all that you're doing in our lives today we need you in a great way today visit our hearts today visit our minds today in the name of Jesus give us a mind to walk up righteously before you as never before we thank you for the opportunity to speak and we thank you for those who have had an opportunity to hear and we pray that we would take these words off of these pages and incorporate them into our lives even your word and your promises that we might walk up righteously before you that we might be able to lift up clean hands without wrath and without doubt Father, we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.